Good day, my friends. We're at Judges chapter 17. I think we left off at verse uh, 4. Yet he restored the money unto his mother, and his mother took two hundred shekels of silver and gave them to the founder, who made thereof a graven image and a molten image, and they were in the house of Micah. Notes. Now, far too many modern Christians are actually founders of graven and molten images, but in a different form now and then. It is now in the form of denominationalism, uh, methodology, false doctrine, etc., etc., etc. Uh, I even had a pastor of my church, and he will even admit to you that at one time his vehicle was actually an idol. Boy, he was proud of that car. Uh, well, God took a pretty good care of that situation. That car is no longer his. <laughs> Pastor Leonard Derrick. I'll, I'll never forget that man. But anyways, verse 5. And the man Micah had an open house of gods and made an ephod and a teraphim and consecrated one of his sons who became his priest. Notes. Now these images together with the ephod, teraphim, and priest suggest that this... Uh, that this uh, domestic uh, chapel was a corrupt imitation of the tabernacle. And all of this was contrary to the word of God, which should be obvious. The word commanded one place of worship only, and it forbade images. And it permitted none to be priests but the sons of Aaron. No description is given in the Bible of the teraphim. However, it is believed they were a particular object shaped in the form of an idol, which was... Uh, actually consulted with. Hmm. Verse 6. In those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Hmm. Here we hear that again. Notes. Due to improper leadership in the modern church, which in the eyes of God is no leadership at all, most of the people are being led in the wrong direction. Yesterday it was promise keepers, and presently it is the government of twelve, or uh, seeker-sensitive churches, or the word of faith doctrine, etc., 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 and every last one of them fall into the unscriptural column. The difference between now and then is that the people are not so much presently doing that which is right in their own eyes, but rather in the eyes of someone else who is rather a wolf in sheep's clothing. Matthew chapter 7, verse 20, verse uh, 14 through 20. Verse 7. And there was a young man out of Bethlehem, Judah, of the family of Judah, who was a Levite, and he sojourned there. Hmm. Okay, notes. Now this statement in this verse doesn't mean that this Levite was from the tribe of Judah, but rather that he had made his home in Bethlehem, which was in the realm of the tribe of Judah. Verse 8. And the man departed out of the city from Bethlehem, Judah, to sojourn where he could find a place, and he came to Mount Ephraim to the house of Micah as he sojourned, or as he journeyed. Notes. Now, if Phineas, the high priest, and the nation had obeyed the scriptures, this Levite would not have had to travel about looking for a place to serve. Verse 9. And Micah said unto him, From where do you come? And he said unto him, I am of... I am a Levite of Bethlehem, Judah, and I go to so to sojourn where I may find a place. And Micah said unto him, Dwell with me, and be unto my father a priest, and I will give you ten shekels of silver by the year, and a uh, suit of apparel, and your victuals. So the Levite went in. Notes. Micah called his chapel a house of God, which it which it actually is in the original Hebrew, but the Holy Spirit called it a house of idols in verse 5. The true house of God was neglected and as hard to find then as it, is, as it is today. And too often when found, amusements rather than worship characterizes it, such as in verse uh, chapter 21, verse uh, 21 through 23. Now it seems that these uh, preachers are basically for sale now, just as they were then. Verse 11, And the Levite was content to dwell with the man, and the young man was unto him as one of his sons. Uh, notes. Uh, I wanted to mention this. 
Uh, I, if my mind serves me correctly, it's First uh, Timothy chapter uh, chapter six, verse one through eight, and it should tell you how to look for a false preacher and to identify them very, very easily. What it boils down to, it's all about the money, folks. Anyways, verse twelve, and Micah con- uh, consecrated the Levite. And the young man became his priest and was in the house of Micah, and said, Micah, now that I, now know I that the Lord will do me good, seeing I have a Levite to my priest. Mm. Notes: It didn't exactly turn out this way, for he was afterwards robbed of both his idols and his priest. He had, like some people at the present time, a little knowledge of the scriptural worship, but only sufficient to make him idolatrous and superstitious. In other words, he's not in a very good condition. Chapter 18. In those days there was no king in Israel, and in those days the tribe of the Danai sought them an inheritance to dwell in, for unto that day all their inheritance had not fallen unto them among the tribes of Israel. Notes. The time frame of this chapter probably occurred when Othniel was the judge in Israel, the portion assigned to the tribe of Dan was in the area of the Philistines, recorded in Joshua chapter 19, verse 40. Uh, however, it seems they did not have enough faith to overcome the Philistines. So instead, and out of the will of God, they undertook an expedition against a small and defenseless people in the extreme north of the land, and they built a city there which they called Dan. Uh, thus originating the expression from Dan even unto Beersheba and publicly established idolatry. Now, this is probably the reason for the omission of their name in Revelation chapter 7. Okay? Well, we'll get, we'll get to that book eventually, but anyway, <laughs> verse 2. And the children of Dan sent of their family five men from the borders, men of valor from Zorah and from Eshtael, to spy out the land and to search it. And they said unto them, Go search the land, who when they came out to Mount Ephraim, to the house of Micah, they lodged there. When they were by the house of Micah, they knew the voice of the young man, the Levite. And they turned in thither and said unto him, Who brought you here? And what are you doing in this place? And what have you here? And he said unto them, Thus and thus dealt Micah with me, and has hired me, and I am his high priest. Or his priest. Not high priest, but priest. Sometimes I get ahead of myself. Verse 5. And they said unto him, Ask counsel, we pray you of God, that we may know whether our way which we shall go shall be prosperous. Now, notes. They should have themselves prayed... uh, Uh, They should have prayed before they left, and they would have known the will of God, but instead of, uh, they were having to depend on someone else. That's not very good. Verse 6. And the priest said unto them, Go in peace, before the Lord is your way, therein you go. Notes. Now, the action of the Danites in asking this Levite to divine for them, no doubt, by means of the teraphim or the ephod, shows how far at this early date the word of God was departed from. They ought to have been shocked and grieved at a Levite assuming priestly functions. And they should have been indignant at the existence of the house of idols in rivalry with the tabernacle of Jehovah. Verse 7. Then the five men departed and came to Laish, that's about 30 miles north of the Sea of Galilee, and saw the people who were therein, how they dwelt careless, after the manner of the Zidonians, quiet and secure, and there was no magistrate in the land that might put them to shame in anything, and they were far from the Zidonians and had no business with any man. And they came unto their brethren to Zorah and Eshtael, and their brethren said unto them, What do you say? And we must pick up in chapter 18, verse 9 of the book of Judges. Thank you very much, and God bless.